George Brown, Mandis Buckle, in King's Court. Today, today, today. How you guys doing? We back for another episode. And what's up, Mandis? How you doing? I'm good, George. We're uh, getting ready to head to New York tomorrow. Um, just got back from Pittsburgh a few days ago. We're we're right in the middle of the season. Uh, the hustle and the bustle is happening here now. Uh, exciting, exciting times. Starting to get a little tired, but exciting. Yeah. Ain't no time to get tired, man. Uh, you yep. lucky you get to go to New York, man. I don't get to go. I'm going to South Carolina. You're going to South Carolina yeah. to cover yeah. Junior USA's. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But before we get to New York, because you know that's the topic, uh, let's let's recap the Pittsburgh show. Absolutely. You know, I was just going to ask, like, what did you just think just overall before we kind of touch on, you know, specifics? So I I think Pittsburgh is just such a it's just such a different show. Um, when when you go to do the Pittsburgh Pro, first of all, everyone who's going to do the Pittsburgh Pro knows that it's the Pittsburgh Pro. So everyone trains hard for every show, but you put a little extra into it. You know it's the center of the bodybuilding world. Um, it's a very, it's a very unique venue. It's a very unique weekend. So it's exciting. Um, you you oh. tend to see deep lineups, and you tend to see people who are in the top in the top five, or if we call it first callouts, go on to do big things later on that year and years to come. So usually. Uh, traditionally, been in a, in first callouts in Pittsburgh. The next three or four years for you, and sometimes longer, are usually pretty good. Yeah, man. Uh, Pittsburgh is a is a show that lets you know exactly where you stack up. You know, yeah. I, I don't think this show let us down. Definitely, uh, in our division, you know, um, Ray came out with the win. Kyron pushed him. Um, and Chala, you know, they they look good. The top three were were all legit. Um. Where I was surprised, not surprised, but, you know, uh, impressed was with the second call out. Yeah. Um, those guys, it was solid. Like, it may not be, you know, uh, one of your top names or whatever, but it shows the the evolution that, you know, um, guys are out there working, you know. But that second call out, man, that 6 through 10 was, uh, was, was impressive, definitely. I mean, some of those guys could have easily been in the first call out, you know. Um, but the show itself, you know, it just was exciting. Like I said, you see the who's who of bodybuilding, you know, and Pittsburgh is the place to be, you know. So I look forward to, you know, uh, seeing what's up with New York. Yeah, you know, I, it, New York is gonna be is gonna be interesting it, to to continue on Pittsburgh a little bit. I feel I, I think there's gonna be several guys who were in second callouts, like you said that go on to win shows later on this year. I, I think, if not all of them, almost all of them. And, and, and I think the introduction of Chala, who finished third, to really the rest of the country was a big deal. That's the first time I'd seen him in person. Um, he's got the look. He comes in condition. His posing needs some work. His presentation is not the best. But he's got the physique and he's got the look and, and you can see the confidence. Um, I think a lot of people just realize who Chala is. And I know I'm one of them. Yeah, now I knew who he was from last year. Um, you know, he was down in Columbia with Ray. So I definitely knew who he was. I believe that may have been my first time seeing him in person. But he looks the same as he does on the Internet. Yeah. Uh, so uh, be on the lookout for Chala because he's not playing no games. Right, right. Yeah, but... Uh, you know, uh, speaking on New York Pro, uh, the Pittsburgh winner, Ray, is not going to be doing a New York Pro um, because of, you know, some family issues. I believe he had a death in the family, so he's going to go and, you know, pay his respect to his grandmother. Um, I believe she had a big part in, you know, uh, raising him to be the man that he is today. You know, so he chose to, you know, go see her off um, as I feel like he should. You know? uh, uh, that to me, that's a no-brainer, man. Yeah. I know some people would say, you know, their mom or their dad or their grandma or their grandpa would want them to compete. If this was maybe the Arnold or the Olympia, um, and, and and this was all-encompassing for Ray or a show he had to do, 
I can understand perhaps uh, he he might make a different decision, but that's not the situation. And he's already in. He's already one of the best in the world. Uh, there's going to be other shows. I, yeah. I, 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 you know, Ray, uh, condolences uh, and and grandmother's in a better place. But yeah, that's a to me that's a that's an easy decision. Yeah, and we and we it shows the type of person that he is, right? And, and we've seen that before, like as far as like Chase, I believe he had uh, some things going on, and he chose to you know his family. At the end of the day, you know what we're doing is is uh, is leisure, you know, um, and there there are other important things to do, you know. So, uh, you know what it does is it, it leaves a uh, you know a title, an open title, you know. So uh, who who you feel is the, is the front runner? Well, this this is going to be really interesting because uh, we've got a guy that we haven't seen or heard from, and, and and I still don't know if anyone's really seen or heard from him. Akeem Scott supposedly is doing New York. Have no idea um, if he does. He, he he should be one of the guys that you expect to be in the top three or four, um, fighting for a W. Uh, I believe Shirak Shabazz is 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 doing this show. Um, he's usually a first call out athlete. Let's see if he's made the jump finally. Um, Shirak is a guy who three or four years ago, when he turned pro, he had all the potential in the world. Um, it seems like he's kind of hit the, the the slow lane since then. You haven't seen massive improvements in him. Since then, improvements, but but not the types of leaps and bounds you would like to see out of somebody who could have potentially been a top six, top seven, top eight Olympian. So maybe this is the year that he he finally really kicks the door down and breaks through to move into that elite group. And then I think you've got a an, an open field then with the rest, like you said. Pittsburgh's a big. I, I'm sorry, New York is a big man show. The stage is really far away. It's Steve Weinberger. It's Tyler Mannion. It's Jim Mannion. And those of you who don't know, Steve, Jim, if you don't have muscle, you're not going to be in the yeah. pool. I don't, yeah. I don't care. It's yeah. bodybuilding. The sport is bodybuilding. And then with, with the stage being that far away, got Dennis and guys like that might do okay because of shape and conditioning uh but i think they're gonna kind of disappear um standing next to guys like frank griffin um we we saw one or two other guys in pittsburgh who had some size that maybe they need to work on conditioning a little bit uh, so i think it's going to be really interesting i think we're going to see one or two names that we don't know that are bigger athletes that are all of a sudden going to be splashed in New York. Hey, man, uh, I mean, I can't I can't really disagree with a lot of what you're saying. I mean, you know, as far as the stage being back, as far as the size and, and you know, uh, kind of criteria for that show, I mean, this is a huge title. You know, I don't think people understand, like, the New York Pro title is a huge title. So, you know, for whoever gets it in an open field, um, it's definitely going to be, you know, beneficial to you. Um, Ciroc, I mean, for what I can see, he looks sharp. Um, but it's, it's just on the Internet, you know, so you, you have to see him also compared and standing next to other guys. But he looks like he's on. We've seen Kyron. We've seen him third place at the Arnold. We've seen him pull up in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, what, what version are we going to get? Um, for this show, you know, is he kind of is he going to make any changes? Is he going to be drier, tighter? You know, what's what's he going to do? Um, because to me, I believe he's the front runner set up in the way that, you know, things have been going as far as the bigger shows. You know, he's been placing well, starting from um, Olympia. Um, you know, you got some Akeem, you know, he's top 10 Olympian. Uh, we haven't seen much, though, so there's not much to go on. You know, so right. it's outside out of mind. You know, um, Kim Angel. Um, I know he's a guy that looks good. Uh, Scott Dennis, he placed top five, I believe, um, in Pittsburgh or top six, one or the other. Yeah, um, I think he finished he, six, six yeah. or seventh in Pittsburgh. Yeah, but, but, um, but I'm saying he was in the mix, you know. Um, you mentioned Frank Griffin. I know he's made some changes um, as far as filling out his frame. You know, he looks to, to, to be bringing a different package. Um, a, a Canadian Aaron Legend, you know, he's showing up. I know he's a great poser. 
who knows, you know, but it's an open title. And that's the thing about it. It's kind of like, you know, some of the names, but then what about the guys that we don't know, you know, that are going to show up and, you know, maybe, you know, shock us a little bit, you know, but I think it's going to be an interesting show because, you know, if Ray had done it, you kind of would be like, okay, well, you know, the way things have been going is, I don't want to say it's automatic, but we kind of would have went with him, but without right. him in the field, it's kind of wide open, you know, which makes it interesting. You know? Absolutely. The title's kind of been wrapped up for, you know, the last couple of years. So. Yeah, George, you know, the New York Pro title um, in, in in every division um, really is one of the elite titles in our sport. You know, you've got the Olympia, of course, and you've got the Arnold Classic title. And then the New York Pro title is the number three most prestigious title in the world. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you're coming from. You've got an opportunity here to be on the map and not only be on a map, but be part of history. Because, again, people say, hey, I was a New York Pro champion or I am a New York. Once you're a New York Pro champion, you're always a New York Pro champion. It's, it's, an, it's an elite group. So uh, I, I just think it's really something. And I, I actually just got some information as, as we were talking. It looks like Akeem Scott is not going to be doing the New York Pro. Mm. So this is, this is going to be a show. So you got no Akeem. We weren't sure anyways, but now we know. And you've got no Ray. This thing's really going to be up for grabs. That makes that makes for a very, very, very exciting weekend. Um, George, ambassadors versus sponsored athletes. Well, I mean, it could go. It could go. You know, both. When you got people that pretend that they're a sponsored athlete mm -hmm. when they're really an ambassador. There's nothing wrong with being an ambassador. That's how you become a sponsored athlete. Right. You know, so um, I think the difference between a, a, an ambassador, you are with the company, you represent the company, you may have a promo code, you may do the, the uh, do your legwork. It's paying your dues in any of this. It, it, it's You got to pay your dues if you want to win on stage, um, and you want to pay, you want to get a sponsorship. Um, I've started with companies... Um, just posting for free, you know, just posting them, um, just representing the brand because I really like them. Uh, this is how you become a sponsored athlete. Um, by being an ambassador, just like we are with the NPC, we're ambassadors. You should, you should rep, um, what, what league you're in, you know, regardless, um, if, if there's monetary value or not. Um, but I think that, you know, so everybody wants to be a sponsored athlete but they don't understand the importance of having ambassadors, the importance of being an ambassador. You're learning the product. You know, you're learning the, uh, the people that you sell the product to. Um, you're, you're establishing and building a relationship with the companies. Um, it's more than just you getting paid some money. You know, um, you, should, you should know exactly what product that you're selling. You should know it inside and out. And then when it comes time for you to make a couple bucks, then, you know, You'll, you'll know it, it'll, it'll be well-deserved, number one, but you'll also know your job and your responsibility um, for that company. You know, so uh, both of them are cool. You know, I, I, I've had sponsorships and, and didn't do what I was supposed to do and lost them, you know? And then I had to go right back to being an ambassador, right? And then that brought me right back to being a sponsored athlete. So, you know, just because you may be one or the other, it really doesn't mean anything. The, the main thing is establishing a relationship with the company and then doing your part. You know, George, I, I, I think that a lot of young athletes or, or newer athletes really can learn a lot about this topic from you. Um, you just touched on it. You've been in just about every position and situation and look at where you are now. Look at where you continue to head to. I, I, I think as far as mentorship or, or leadership in the, in the community with other guys, if I was an up-and-comer, you'd be a guy I'd be reaching out to. With that being said, um, there's a huge difference. There's a, there's a massive difference. And 
everyone wants something and they seem to want something for almost nothing nowadays and that goes on both ends it's athletes and companies so you you've got athletes who are trying to, they they think hey i got a pro card now i should be sponsored well what's your value to that company what do you bring to the table um and and, and that comes in a couple different forms a big following and almost all companies require that now because they believe that that's your influence however the smarter companies and, and the companies that do believe in that personal relationship and touch that you touched on even more so they don't only look at your number of followers because we know followers can be bought we know followers really can can be a manipulated number like weight um within your number of followers what's your real influence therein shows your true value because you can have someone with 50,000 followers and their engagements are 3,000 4,000 per post whereas you have someone who has 250,000 followers and their engagements are are the same well I'm sorry, but the, the guy who has 50,000 followers has a far greater influence than, than the guy who has 200,000 followers if their engagements are almost the same. Their people aren't listening to them. They're just, whatever they're posting, it's kind of clickbait and they're moving on. Whereas the other person, they're engaged with, with their followers. Their followers are listening. So there's a couple different ways of looking at things. The other thing is, you have under 20,000 followers, why are you selling anything? You haven't built a big enough uh, foundation, really, for people to believe in everything that you stand for. You need to build your own brand and, and have an understanding first before you start selling products. So when all of a sudden you see someone with 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 followers, and they're selling three or four products, you're gonna stall and you're gonna slow down the process of how many followers you're gonna continue to gain because you have turned yourself into a salesman or a saleswoman. Now, that's different than being an ambassador. So you might put your coupon code on there and all that, and that's part of what you need to do as an ambassador. But from an ambassador standpoint, usually you're pounding the pavement a lot more. You're paying your dues. You're working some boots. You're talking about the company you represent at your gym, to the clients you train, to other people that you have conversations with. You're using the product. That's how you're going to spread uh, um, your, your, your wealth of knowledge about the company you're representing. And there, all of a sudden, people start purchasing your product more. Your influence moves up. Now you show more value to the company. And eventually, hopefully, they give you a sponsorship. And sponsorship, George, as you know, sometimes isn't even a monthly stipend. It can start with, hey, we're going to cover your, your, your travel and your lodging for, might start at only two shows for the year or three shows for the year. Might move up to four or five. That's all still getting paid. That's the process I'd like to see more people work through so they actually have a value. Now everybody just wants something for nothing. And the companies, for those of you who are doing well and, and know that you have more value, if you don't ask, the company's not going to give you anything. They're going to try and keep it at a minimum if they can get away with it. Remember, they're a business, and at the end of the day, they have a bottom line, and that's what they're looking for. Yeah, man, and, and just because you turn into a sponsored athlete does not mean that that will not go away either. Real quick, you know, so I've seen people get deals and a month later that deal gone or mm. six months later that deal's gone, you know, so I mean, it's easier to be an ambassador. Um, I don't want to say it's less requirements, but you know, when someone's paying you, then they're holding you to a standard, right. you know, and they're expecting you to hit some numbers that you better hit or, you know, bye bye, you know, depending on how your contract is, you know, so I think that was a good topic. I think people need to hear it, you know, because 
Um, you can't have one without the other. You're just not walking in the door just being a sponsored athlete. You know? right. And if you are, there's some lessons that you're going to have to learn on the ambassador side to be able to know what you're doing. George, I, I think you you particularly are a perfect example of, I, I want to say, what are you, around 100,000? Some, somewhere? Yeah, I'm about to hit 100K. Come on, help me out. There we go. Hey, guys, go ahead and jump on. Help me out. Yet your engagement ratio, I see, is as high, if not higher, than most people that have double the followers. That yeah. You equate to a 200, 250, 300,000 follower uh athlete that shows how much more influence you have over these people who just have a following so there is a big difference you know and again the savvy companies they're looking at all these things yeah. looking yeah. at it. you know yeah. some people don't know there's actually companies where you can go on and do the analytics of somebody's following are they real followers are they fake have they been bought are they male are they female what the age groups are so yeah, the other yeah. thing, guys, is you have to look at the types of companies you're looking to do business with. And if you're looking to, if you're a female athlete and most of your followers are males because your your pictures are risque um, or, or, or they're really clickbait and you're trying to talk to a, a company that sells women's swimsuits, but your followers are all men. How are you really serving a purpose to that female yeah. company? You know, yeah, true. Again, these are things that, that they need to think about that I don't think they're, they're, they're digging as deep into their memory banks and understanding really how things play out. So, Hey, well, you know, sometimes you just got to, you know, so you're going to have to figure it out. But, I mean, that's a great point because how, how am I selling to a bunch of men and all my, my followers are women? You know, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right, but I got more. Right after we pay some bills, you always do. You always do. That's my tie-in to Kyron Houghton. That's our guest. We got coming ah, up. Ah, here Mr. we go. I got I've more. Wait for this guy. All right, cool. I've been waiting. We'll be right back with, with with the King's Court right after this message. And we're back. I told y'all I had more. Mr. I got more himself. Kyron holding in the building. Kyron yes, coming off of, I believe, number six at the Olympia. Pulled right back up in Columbus with the number three spot. Went out to Pittsburgh, picked up the number two spot. Kyron, was going to go on next week in New York? Shit, man. Uh, hopefully, try to take that home. Have a good homecoming. That's All what right, I'm working cool. for. That's what I'm working for. How you feeling right now, man? Uh, I'm feeling good. I feel like uh, my body's responding well after like the three shows and whatnot. Like I feel like I'm gonna I'm come in my best condition. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right. So people who don't know you, right? Because yeah. uh, you know you're kind of new on the scene. Take us through your career, um, just just real quick, so we can kind of you know you kind of speed us up to you know how we got to this point. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, NPC show. I think I did four in total regional shows. And that's when I uh, hopped onto the national stage at the USA's in 2016. I got third place there. Then I sh uh, shot over to Miami, see if I could still get it that same year. I got fourth there. And so after that, I decided to just take the break and just wait to USA's the following year, uh, 2017. I got the overall. Then I did like my first pro show, maybe like a week after that. And then, uh, yeah, made it to the first Olympia. Uh, did, didn't place well. I, I, even going into that Olympia, I knew I wasn't like, up there yet. I wasn't to the caliber of the, uh, the top dudes in the sport, so it was it was a good experience, good to get my feet wet, but I wanted to come back next year and, and make a statement. So, you, right, so, so, go ahead, George. I was about to say, so what was your breakout show? My, my breakout show? Uh, I would have to say it would be the, uh, the San Diego show I did last year. That was the first show, like, after getting that initial pro win. It was my uh, my first pro win after that, after the uh, the 2017 Olympia. So I feel like that was my breakout show because I got a good. It was a a good package I put together. Uh, me and my coach put together, and uh, came out with the win. So it was my breakout show, in my opinion. Now, I I heard you say home back home. So are you yeah. from New York? 
Absolutely. From uh, Queens, New York, grew up in uh, Far Rockaway, then I moved to Woodside, and then I actually left there when I joined the Navy. So, born and raised in New York. Well, that's what got you out to San Diego was the Navy and that beautiful weather you stayed out there. Hey, yeah, couldn't could resist it. Had to stay. Okay, okay. So, Chiron, you're, you're relatively new to the scene then, man. You know, really, you, you're less than three years in the league, and you're you're already – finding yourself in, in, in a conversation, at least, of elite status. We like to see somebody be a little bit more consistent, a few more shows under their belt at the big shows to mm-hmm. put you in that elite status. Um, but you're, you're right there. You're knocking on the door. This New York Pro, uh, a title, would pretty much cement you a, as yeah. at the elite IFBB pronoun. And so this is really only in, in, in your first two years as a pro then? Basically, yeah. I went pro to 2017 in July. So, yeah, about yeah. two years now. Yeah. That's a so, fast rise to the top, my man. What do you attribute that to? I uh, just – the fact that I got the Navy and then, like, my whole plan was to just kind of, like, focus on this, focus on fitness. I think just me focusing my energy on it and just, like, committing myself to it. I think that's what uh, made the difference, basically. So how much, but how much training and gym time did you have as a background? Because there's no way that anybody, no matter how good your genetics are, and all of you in the top ten have superior yeah. genetics. So let's let's throw that out the window. You obviously have, um, uh, but absolutely. to be able to get to that elite status, as well, you, were you already a gym rat? Did you play football? You know, in high school and college. Give us a little bit about that background. Uh, I was never really a good. No, no football and like that. I boxed when I was in high school, my last two years of high school. So that was like my discipline uh, background, basically, just boxing. And, uh, yeah, I think that, that kind of like set me up to understand how to train, understand like intensity. I think that's definitely what uh, laid the, the groundwork for that. All right, now, so the, the I Got More, tell me about that. Where did that come from? Uh, the IGM, I Got More. It's uh, whatever endeavor, whatever goal you're trying to accomplish, it doesn't matter what it requires from you you have what it takes to complete it. So I got more. It's like, even if I felt like I gave this prep my all, if I need to improve, then I got more. I got what it takes to, to come next time better. You know what I mean? Just a reminder to myself that I got what it takes. I got more. So so that's basically your mentality, which is, you know, never give up. You know, mentality always, you know, put out more than what I already put out. Um, Absolutely. I was about to ask you, uh, what would you tell, like, you know, because everybody wants to go that path that you went. Number one, it didn't take that long. Um, yeah. How do you find yourself in that in that spot? Is it because of that mentality? Because everybody wants to go. They want to do an NPC show. They want to turn pro. They want to get sponsored. They want to win the New York Cup. They want to win major, you know, shows. You know, and just be out there yeah. and be this, you know, fitness personality. How did you get there? Like, what do you think you did different? Was it just that mentality, or was it just the way the cars felt? Uh, I just think it's uh, like divine timing. Everything meeting up at the right spot at the right time. Like just the genetics are there. Obviously, I have the discipline background, and just everything kind of falling in place the way it's supposed to. I just, uh, I, I guess that's what I attribute it to. Just divine timing. Everything's happening the way it's supposed to. And like, if you find your purpose, then things are things are move faster. You know what I mean? So, so it has nothing to do with Terry Plackett. Oh, I, I, absolutely. I, I think that's one of the components. <laughs> that's another one of the components that just fell into place. Having a good coach for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, how, what is, what is he like? How does he help you out as far as you know everything on the journey? You know, guidance and all of that. Oh uh, shit! Like I, I wouldn't have never done that first pro show without his uh his his guys let me know, yo, just do it, you're ready. So uh, me doing that first pro show, it was definitely his motivation, and just throughout the year, just be it's more than the coach, it's more than writing diets, and just we we've definitely connected, and like on, on a family level, so it's like it's my brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. How is he as a coach? Like Mandis Rufus. You know, uh, you know, Omar Ruthless. How is Terry? Is he? I mean, I know he, he comes, you know, stems from Omar, but you know, yeah. is he? How is he as a coach? Uh, I, I think right now we've uh, established a, a good working relationship, so that he's a little bit more relaxed on me. But when it's time, when he knows, like maybe if it looks like I'm slacking or something like that, or just looks like I need to be kind of steered in the right direction, he'll he'll, he'll, he'll uh, pump it up a little bit. You know what I mean? So, Kyron, yeah. you're you're a, you're atop the leaderboard. For- points you're 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 in you're in uh i believe 24 yeah. currently um uh I think, I think it was 25 last time i checked 25 okay um all right is new york gonna be your last show and are you doing new york 
for for going after such a prestigious title or do you feel like you need more time on the state on the big stages so you can feel more comfortable at the olympia because otherwise uh, you know, some people would say you're, you're already in shut it down yeah i i just i think it's a it's just a, a spot that i have to hit i want to make the east coast run this year i had to hit the arnold had to hit pittsburgh so now i have to hit new york these are the shows that i haven't done and these are the shows where they have the most notoriety basically but just it's something that i have to do you know what i mean yeah, and you're ready. You're yeah. ready. I, I think you are one of the few situations where, because you are still new in the sport, and like you said, these are shows you haven't done. To be elite, these are shows you have to have under your belt. Absolutely, um, so absolutely. It's a, it's a great move, um, smart decision. Will New York be your last show, though, of the year then until the Olympia? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the way it's shaking up right now. That's, that's the plan. So do this one, knock this one out of the park, and then just relax into the O. When did you guys decide this run? Did this, you uh, figure this out after the Olympia? Did you do it in December? Uh, it, it, was, it was definitely after the after the Olympia. Um, I figured that, that happened, you know what I'm saying? But that could have been a fluke. And it also, it's always got to prove something to yourself. Like, I came in on point. Maybe some other people didn't come in on point. I had to, like, prove to myself that I belong in that upper echelon of, like, athletes and whatnot. So I know I had to hit all the biggest shows that they were going to be at. So, yeah. So so what is um, – I was about to say, what is your mentality? Um, what do you want us to know about you? Like, if you had to just say, like, you know, I'm kind of like, what do you – what do you want to be known for? Like, is it going to be hard work? Is it going to be, you know, posing? Or just like, you know, if, if you had, like, because this is with, with the platform, is for people to kind of like, you know, know yeah. who, who you are. You know, like Kyron, oh, yeah, he's going to come in built. We know him. Yeah. Or Kyron, oh, man, listen, he's going to come in hard as nails. Or, oh, man, he's going to pose. Like, what do you want to be known for? Uh, Just the intensity and the mindset. I think that's what sets it. all athletes apart, anyone apart. Just your mindset, like the way, the things, you, you, the thoughts and the ideas you have in your mind when you go do something. Like, so just basically that intensity and mindset that sets everything apart. So it's like, when you say mindset, is it like you just more so manifesting your thoughts? Or is it just crossing yeah. the T's and dotting the I's? Or? It, it, it just uh, just kind of understand how energy works and using okay. that. Like, yeah, okay. just using how energy works. All right, so yeah. where did you get that from? Is that from reading books or is that just from, you know? Uh, it's, it's a combination of things. Like, uh, obviously reading books, watching video, just kind of like immersing myself in different like fields of study, basically. Trying to understand life, trying to understand the universe, basically. And I just kind of came across some things that I resonate with that I kind of like use as my, my belief system in this life, you know? How old are you? Uh, 28. Okay. I actually, I actually turned 29 the day before the show, May 17th. Okay. All right. Well, so, happy early birthday. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. A lot of years ahead of him, and he's already moved himself into that upper echelon somebody to look out for for a long long time i appreciate that appreciate we're, that we're, we're gonna have to see what the wheels look like in new york uh, <laughs> hey okay okay uh, <laughs> you know uh, especially with some of you guys with, with classic physique where it is there there's a lot of really good men's physique pros that when they're around the ages that you are some of you guys are really looking at not only what the, the near future will bring, um, but an evolution. Because at some point, your upper body will be maxed out for that division. Um, yeah. Some guys, classic physique is never going to be an option. And others, it's going to be a seamless transition. And for others, it's where they're going to have to move, but they're going to start all over at the bottom. Is that yeah. you give any thought to? Or right now, you're... Just focus on a men's physique division. You're not worried about anything else. Uh, right now, I am just focused on the men's physique division. I do love. I, I like the classic physique division. I, I like the posing. I like all that. So I do eventually want to bring my physique up there. And even if I don't compete, just want to bring my physique to a point where it could be. If that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What time? Yeah. What day are you getting in New York? Uh, actually, uh, fly out tonight, 1030. So I'll get okay. there tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look, man, good luck, man. You know, it's, it's the title is, is right there for the taking for you. You seem to have a mindset, you know, I got to uh, know a little bit more about you. I hope, you know, some, some people out there 
um, can see your journey. You see how you yeah. wasn't winning your first time you went to Olympia. You didn't, you know, that, and that's what For people sure. think. Like, it didn't come overnight, you know, and you still it, in it, the mud, you know, so yeah. keep on grinding, man. For sure, for sure. I, I appreciate you, fellas. I appreciate it. For yeah, sure. No problem. King's yeah. Court. Hell Manage. yeah. Got, what you got, man? Dude, I can't wait to see what happens this coming weekend. This is going to be yeah. exciting. We'll we'll see you there tomorrow. We get in early tomorrow as well, Kyron. I'll see you over at Bev's gym. It's like a good plan. It's like a good plan. Absolutely. All right. All right, cool. Yeah. Another another great King's Court episode. Mr. I Got More. See, we got to give you a name now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got a name, man. You got to come Mr. up with IGM. something. Mr. IGM. Mr. IGM. It's right there. Then. <laughs> then it is. Mr. IGM. Yes, it did. Candace Buckle. King George. For the King's Court. For Maximum Muscle Report. And we out. All right, peoples.